Your great great grandfather was once the richest man in Boston. So how come we're so poor? Well, all of that money was put into a trust. Nobody could touch it, except for your great grandmother. She controls it all, and she decides when to give who what. It's hard to explain. This is such an intimate story about your childhood growing up in Cambridge in the 70s with a father who suffered from bipolar disorder. Was it hard to get to the place where you could tell that story? I feel like I always was writing about it uh, f f from even when I was in high school, so I was always exploring these emotions that come with having a family member you care about deeply who is struggling with either addiction or mental illness or something like that, where you're just rooting for them. And I've always been that kind of a writer, um, exposing everybody around me. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, my mother, by the time I wrote this movie, my mother was used to it. But it was hard to um, sort of emotionally go back into all those feelings because my father actually died in 1998. It was a re-engagement re with um, a lot of my um, feelings of love and pain for him. Would you have liked him to have seen the movie? I would like, yeah. I would love him to see the movie. Yeah. I think he would have been very critical. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing for a father to be. And Mark, so you played Cam Stewart. What was it about the role that attracted you? Honestly, the, the balance between the humor and the, uh, and the pathos um, and, and this wonderful relationship that he has with his, with his girls and the kindly way that the, the whole story was handled. Can we talk about your mother oh, for a yes, moment? Because yes. I just want your next movie to be just about her. <laughs> I find her fascinating. I mean, who, who does that? Says Bohemia is over, goes off to Columbia to get her MBA in the 70s. Yes. An African-American woman. Yes. She's my hero. She was pretty amazing. I will, The great thing about writing the movie is that, you know, um, having grown up with the situation, I then had my own children, and then I had a lot of sort of mixed feel, mixed anger, I would say, at my mother for, you know, I had these little kids and I thought, how did you leave us? How could you have left us? I'm seeing this, this anew, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't feel when I was little really that she left us because she came back all the time. I wrote the script and in writing it, I, she became my hero too, which was really amazing. Um, I just felt such gratitude to her for what she had done and I understood the sacrifices. You directed your own daughter in this film, playing you. Did yes, that make your head spin sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it was a little weird. I would say I'm an intuitive person. I'm not an analytical person, so I didn't really think about it too much. She had a lot of emotional scenes, and it was a lot to ask of a little kid. And and I don't know that I was always I didn't always have the time to sort of process right. that with her. Um, my husband, who produced the movie, was very helpful in that regard. And I wanted it was hard to be there as the mother in the way that one might want to yeah. if I weren't actually also directing the movie. So that was in terms of thinking about the story and my own mother, I had to sort of say, it's gonna be okay. Like this is the period we're going through. We're having a, a great creative experience. Uh, maybe I'm not the most present mother every second of this experience, but it'll be, be over and it'll be fine. Right. You'll be fine, I'll be, we'll all be fine. What kind of research did you do with Maya or on your own? Maya was giving me videos of Cam that he'd made during his ma mania. And, um, and pictures, and I was hearing stories, mostly to do with this blue, blue uh, blood, you know. The Boston mid ramen. Right, yeah, right. Mid-Atlantic quality. I didn't really understand a lot of that because I I'm, I'm, come from a blue collar family. So. Well, it is an interesting point because you watch and you see, you know, your father is a Forbes, yes. and a clear blue-blooded family, yet, at least in the film, the family doesn't offer him much help when he's suffering. I think my father's family believed that he was very um, creative and intelligent, and they were conf they didn't understand. I think this this often this is also another big challenge when there's someone in your life who has these issues. How much do I help you, and how much is that destroying your own uh, uh, ambition to help yourself? You know, enabling. Right? They wouldn't have used that word, but I think they they were hoping he would pull it together not understanding the gravity of the disease. Well, what is your relationship like with your Forbes relatives now, and did they like the film? So uh, I have a very good relationship with my, rel my Forbes relatives. I mean, everyone has sort of, uh, I think, um, in my family, everyone has sort of suffered under the burden of what they're supposed to be and who they actually are. My father's three siblings saw the film, and I think they, I mean, they loved it. I was really, I was very scared for them to see it. So was it hard then for you to wrap your head around that aspect of it, the sort of the Brahmin Beacon Hill part? Yes, a cause little it, bit. Yeah, because it, I couldn't understand 
why they weren't more helpful to him right and or, or how the money was gets in the way it almost gets in the way of being helpful it's in a, a curse way. yeah plus what i came to understand also which which was difficult for cam i believe was everywhere he looked in boston his family had some historical uh, hand in it. He couldn't go anywhere without feeling this pressure of auspice on him. And, and I think that had a, a really debilitating effect on him at times. What's next? Are you are you still you know reeling from this one? I'm very excited that this is coming out. I mean, I'm, we're we're on a little tour and we're ex we're thrilled. And I just hope that I get to direct more movies. And what about you, Mark? Any more Marvel um, comic book movies in the future? Down the line, but I'm really waiting for Maya to finish this romantic comedy yes. that we're going to do together. Yes. Great. No more yeah. standalone Hulk movies. I don't. There's nothing. They have, I don't know how that's not going to happen. They don't own the material. They don't own the that's Hulk. How, that's how it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> that's the one way. Now you've answered my question. Yeah. 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 Universal Mystery solved. owns the, the standalone Hulk movie, so that's problematic. But there will be more Avengers movies. There will be more. I'm not sure I'm in them, but there will be, I know for a fact, they're doing at least two more.